Hey everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program uh, RP0 the suite of mods for the uh, realism overhaul set up on Kerbal Space Program uh, last time we finally 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 got a satellite in orbit of the moon which was no small feat considering the like seven episodes of failures um, this time through uh, we're going to try to switch things up and start gearing up for a crewed space flight. Uh, we will be attending to an uncrewed moon landing later, but we want to get some more technology to do that first. Uh, what we're going to look at today is going to be successful re-entry, which uh, gives us about a year to complete. No big deal. So we'll just go ahead and take that contract. And these, if they're still around when the rocket's finished building, We'll probably take one of them. But uh, for the meantime, we have these two rockets building, the GR-1A and the GR-1A.1. The dot one I have uh, adjusted to take, uh, really since we finished researching uh, con basic construction, I think it was, we unlocked service module tanks, which are a lot lighter than the fuselage tanks for highly pressurized fuels. And I went ahead and upgraded that one already to have those. The GR-1A, I have not. We're going to go back and do that now because we're going to retrofit it with a different payload to uh, test a re-entry delivery device. So, hooray! Uh, I tested this launcher once. It was kind of a last-minute uh, build in hopes of being able to put a satellite in orbit of the moon, but it turns out that the old RA-8C was perfectly capable. So this is a much larger, much heavier launch vehicle uh, with a lot of improvements, including an LR-105. Uh, sustainer stage for its second stage and then a uh, RD-105 uh, to hopefully round out orbital insertion and then that was supposed to be our transfer stage but that's kind of what we're gonna be mucking around with today so let's get these fairings off And let's go ahead and get in here and tinker with our fuel setup. See, they're still set to fuselage, which has a dry mass of 126 kilograms. Service module, which has a dry mass of 34 kilograms, which is much, much better. So we're going to put some hydrazine in this one for those uh, RCS thrusters. Not nearly that much. Let's just uh, taper it off. It, we'll just say uh, one... 50, probably way more than we would need, and then we'll top it off with UDMH. And we've got a couple more stages to do that with. Uh, let's just remove all tanks there. Service module, UDMH, and then we've got this kind of difficult to get to tank. Is that it? There we go. Remove. Oh, uh, I did the wrong thing. Yeah, sit control Z and just wait around for a couple of minutes while it figures out what it, whoa, whoa, please tell me that didn't just undo everything. Jeez, a lot of did. Damn it. <laughs> Remove tanks. Service module, show you why. Z125. Okay. That side. Oh, no, not utilization. What was that? 86? Okay. Service module. UDMH. get to the top of this. Uh, 
Okay, so that is the correct tank. Remove. Service module, UDMH. And that lightens our payload by quite a bit. All right, and then in interest of other tidying up some things, let's just go ahead and move that up a bit. Just these down. Fit. That almost fits. There we go. Perfect. All right. Now let's just double check the rest of our tanks. All right. And our toggle pump. True. Toggle pump. False new no. toggle pump true. We're gonna need that to fuel these things. <laughs> so true, 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 true. Alright, we're gonna have, probably gonna have to come back and recheck these anyway. Because we are going to make a new payload. Go ahead and ditch all of that. All right, pods. Guess let's just. Should we stick with the able? Battery life on that is pretty terrible, and that means we're going to need a battery. But it does have pitch and roll program. All right, let's just do it. Yeah, let's walk it up here to the top. All right, so since we're going to be doing some re-entry stuff, we're going to have some recoverable science, which is things we have not done in the past. So, and 20 large. How many times can we run this? we'll figure that part out. First and foremost, we'll take that. Those are the same, aren't they? We're going to take a couple of these because we've, I guess I haven't actually done any of these before, have I? And let's just go ahead and tuck those in. Real nicely there. And we don't really need any of the rest of these, but we're going to take along some antennae just to make sure we've got uh, good data on the way down. A parachute, obviously. I guess we'll take this cone chute. Can't edit it here, can I? No, we gotta go to action groups, but that's good. So, action group one, activate, and action group 10, alright, and then, uh, let's take photographs. Observe bio sample. And I don't think we'll need it, but we'll analyze telemetry on that also. Alright, and for our parachute. I guess Kerbin doesn't say Earth, but uh, single shoot, triple shoot, yes. And then altitude. We want to set that fairly low to make sure our speed will be low enough. So 2500 and we'll do an actual deployment at 500. Apply settings. Successful. Back to parts. Alright, so that will is most of our return capsule. Um, nope, not utility. 
I'm assuming heat shields will be yes here in aerodynamics. I guess we're going to non RP zero, heat shield five, no. 2.5, 2 meter, 1 meter. How big is that? I'm going to guess it's about 1.5 meter. Man, all 20 large pop. Oh, good guess. Good, good guess. All right, and now we're going to need. Heat shield decoupler. Space that out a bit. And we just need something to orient it and to deorbit it. So, we don't need a whole lot of fuel in that, but we would like to be able to get the range of those thrusters beyond. The depth of that heat shield. So, tank type service module. Awesome. All right. Let's get some beams on it. <coughs> Whoo! Excuse me. Are these the big ones? Yeah. We want the big ones because, as far as we know, it's a pretty heavy package. All right. Go ahead and slap a 1k thruster on here also, just to make sure we got enough oomph, 100% hydrazine. So what does that do for us as far as delta V? 706 meters a second, jeez, a lot more than I actually think we need, but it should be more than enough to deorbit this. Mm hmm, Let's just skip a bunch. Good enough. We don't really need a lot of this stuff. All right. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm forgetting something, but whatever. <laughs> we're above our tonnage. Uh, we're above our height by 0.4 meters. Crap. above our height by 1.5 meters. That's much more accurate. All right, first thing, uh, what can we adjust down? I think, yeah, we already tucked that engine, didn't we? And that's a fuel tank. I don't think there's really much we can do. No way, maybe. Erg. Alright. We are going to shorten our sustainer stage just a bit. Doesn't seem to be affecting anything. Are we pulling up from the ground? No. Okay, what is happening? What we are going to do is... Why aren't any of these actually changing when I adjust their values? Hmm. Forty. I can't. That's inside there. All right. We're gonna have to adjust that up and put those back on. Okay. Those were auto adjusted. This I don't think we can. Yeah. Maybe. All right. We're within our limits now. <laughs> Let's go through and check our staging up here at the upper echelons of things. Mechjab window, you can go away. Alright. Um, 
there's that separator and that parachute, which we need to distinguish. Where's the engine for that upper stage? <laughs> for half, all right, there's, there's the engine for that upper stage. You can go up there. That's that, and those four, and that's the decoupler. And that goes up there, right? Engine, decouple, decouple the drive stage, then parachute. So far, so good. It's that engine, and that's the heat shield. Oops, don't need that. We'll just bump it up into this one. Heat shield goes before, actually, after parachute, just to make sure we'll ditch that. We may not even need to ditch that. All right, so that's that. And those four, and that engine, and that engine, and decouple. That decouple with the parachute and that decouple. Where are, there's my fairings. Those can come down and go where? Probably after booster set before staging. Uh -oh. So that's, all right. Booster start, launch, that ignition. That's booster set, and that's staging. So these four need to go up here. That's bearing set, that's booster set. That ignition. Okay, those are the yellage motors, and there's stage ignition. All right, that should be it, right? Eight out of two. Save edits. Right? Good? You happy with that? I'm happy with that. Alright, and let's go ahead and cue that one up first. 1.2 will take 124 days to build. And so yeah, we're going to go ahead and work to do that. I'm going to go pick up some of this things. Because we have a really long time. <laughs> to research all of this neat stuff that I would really like to have researched so that we can start uh, shooting for our uh, uncrewed mood landing, which hopefully we'll get to in the next couple of episodes. But anyway, I'm going to call that one here. Thanks for tuning in for this uh, build episode. We'll get along to this launch and hopefully a successful re-entry and also a test flight of the GR1 in our next episode. So thanks for hanging out. I appreciate it. I will see you all next time.